with fiction gives us an even deeper connection to characters, and it provides us with a better understanding of how events such as this affect the lives of those left behind. We will look at Stephen Fowler's young protagonist, Oscar Schell, who has lost his father. He and his mother struggle to rebuild their lives. Oscar cherishes the phone messages his father left behind in the hours before the second plane hit. These fragments of his father's voice are a reminder of the innocence that he and millions of others lost on September 11th. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer and With Their Eyes by Annie Toms. Message 1, Tuesday, 8.52 a.m. Is anybody there? Hello, it's Dad. If you're there, pick up. I just tried the office, but no one is picking up. Listen, something's happened. I'm okay. They're telling us to stay where we are and wait for the firemen. I'm sure it's fine. I'll give you another call when I have a better idea of what's going on. Just wanted to let you know that I'm okay and not to worry. I'll call again soon. My name is Katie Barringer, freshman. <clears throat> I'm Kevin Jean, sophomore. We didn't know what was going on. I went to home to change my program. It's on the second floor, and then I, I saw something hit the building first time. So, when you see this psychopathic lady running down the hallway, like, I need to call my mother, I need to call my mother. We're all like, what is wrong with her? I saw the whole thing. I saw something hit the building and then everyone was just laughing. Everyone was laughing. And we didn't know what was going on, so we were, like, laughing at her. So I, I went back into class and the teacher was just teaching a lesson like nothing even happened. But then we heard that thing on the speakers, but we still thought it was like tiny. And they were telling us out of respect, like when that guy died and we all had a moment of silence. We thought it was something like that. I was talking to some of my friends. I, I was asking if they saw the plane. They're like, yeah. And they were like laughing. And it was like, this guy was blazed, this guy was stoned, some moron hit the building. But I saw my friend, and he was telling me about these things that he was seeing up the windows, and I was like, holy shit, this is big. Message 2, 9, 12, AM. It's me again, are you there? Hello? Sorry if it's getting a bit smoky. I was hoping you would be home. I don't know if you've heard about what's happened, but I just wanted you to know that I'm okay. Everything is fine. When you get this, give Grandma a call. Let her know that I'm okay. I'll call again in a few minutes. Hopefully the firemen will be up here by then. I'll call. I am Ilya Fedshira, senior. My name is Hudson Williams Emil, freshman. We sat there in physics, watching for a while. We all went to art. And one of my friends was going crazy because his parents were boarding a plane that morning to go somewhere, and they got on the plane at like 7.50, and <clears throat> he was going crazy. My art class is on the 10th floor, turned facing north, so. We couldn't see anything. He wasn't sure what plane it was or where it came from. He was really worried about them, and I was telling him, there's really no chance of them being on that plane because of all whatever factors. Probably going in another direction. But everyone was looking out the windows. And we just sat there for a while. We all stared out the windows, and we were all just numb. We saw people running. And then, about 20 minutes into the period, the top of the building fell. So the teacher was like, you know, this might sound stupid and everything, but I still want you guys to draw. And then we, we were watching the building fall. We were watching it from a distance. I usually don't get afraid these to be, but I became, I was really afraid. The teacher was like, you can tell your kids that when the World Trade Center was you know, attacked. 
You guys are drawing contour drawings. I just felt it. This is really happening. This just happens in bad movies. This isn't happening. This isn't real life. And now, now for Oscar. Oscar. Message for 9.46 a.m. It's Dad. Thomas Shell. It's Thomas Shell. Hello? Can you hear me? Are you there? Pick up. Please pick up. I went underneath the table. Hello? Sorry. People are getting crazy. There's a helicopter circling around, and I think we're going to go up on the roof. They say there's going to be some sort of evacuation. I don't have... Try that one. They say there's going to be some sort of evacuation from up there, which makes sense if the helicopters can get close enough. It makes sense. Please pick up. I don't know. Yeah, that one. Are you there? Try that one. When you fell asleep with your head on my lap, I turned on the television. I lowered the volume <clears throat> to a little silent. The same pictures over and over. Planes going into buildings. Bodies falling. People waving shirts out of high windows. Planes going into Bodies buildings. Bodies falling. People covered in gray Bodies dust. Falling. Buildings falling. Planes going Planes into buildings. Going into buildings. buildings falling. People waving shirts Bodies out of high falling. windows. Planes going into buildings. Sometimes I felt your eyelids flickering. Were you awake? We're dreaming. My name is Mira Rapp Cooper, senior. I am Tony Kyung, sophomore. I went to the vigils that happened in Union Square right afterwards, and it was just the most amazing experience. I guess something like this really brings out uh, something you never realized before. Like what we read in Mr. Grossman's class um, about Oedipus. Like, it gave me so much faith in New York. How he was in complete denial throughout the story. How stupid he was, how foolish he was, that he couldn't realize what his true identity was until the very end. I was almost more nostalgic, but optimistic and hopeful, and forgiving, and trusting of people than I ever would have thought anyone could be in this situation. How it was so apparent, this kind of thing really, I could actually understand why he would be in such a deep denial. And, I don't know, it was just everything that was missing from New York was suddenly back there again. You deny something, that that if you accept it, it will hurt you. I guess you deny something, and your denial could be irrational, but I guess the human mind isn't really, at least, totally filled with rationality. And before, I was always thinking, oh, I'm leaving for college. I'm never coming back here. Like, I'm going to move to a nice, clean city where everybody likes each other. There's a part of the human mind that just discards rationality to protect itself from something. So I see denial as a form of protection from some sort of forces that if you accept it, it will hurt you. And then after this, I realized that no matter how far I go, I always have to come back here because the feeling that I've gotten within the last three months has been an irreplaceable one. It may be painful to some people. I guess it's still good, though. It's good to bring out. Message five, ten, oh four, a.m. It's Dad. S Dad, help. It's Dad, no if. Ear any. This sign. Hello. You hear me? We. To the roof. Everything. Okay. Fine. Soon. Sorry. Hear me. Much. Happens? Remember. Remember.